Hello everyone, this is Many Ninjas here. For today's episode in the Bootleg Breakdown series, we're looking at a rather bizarre upscaled version of the SH Figuarts Final Form Frieza figure uh, based on the second release, which was around the Resurrection F film, if I'm not mistaken. As you can see from the incredibly blown up packaging, much like the toy itself, Everything is bereft of any actual logos or markings of any official type, so the maker of this particular product is wholly unknown. And possibly with good reason. Because you see, as I was trying to get this thing out of the clamshell in order to do the first bit of footage with the ruler, I discovered that the ankle joints, unfortunately, in both cases, completely snapped off. Hidden entirely by the box. Now, uh, unfortunately, as you can kind of guess, and for this type of video, that means this is already an automatic fail. But that being said, we're still going to look at the other articulation points to just kind of give you an idea of how this thing might have looked if it actually had survived up to this point. So, all in all, a quick summary of the articulation points. Overall, I'm going to say we have roughly about 20 points of articulation, with a decent recreation of a handful of the regular SH figure out joints, although there are lacking actual range in a lot of spots because they had to make a lot of alternatives. Uh, namely, while the neck and head joints are about fine, the shoulder joints are lacking true butterfly joints, although I don't believe the original Frieza figure had that either, but they're incredibly limited in their range of motion. As are the wrist joints for that matter. While it has the appropriate joints in order to have the proper flexing back and forth, there's no range because of how tightly fitted it is. In terms of the upper body, it's actually a tad loose of anything on this particular toy, and is sticking out especially along the back there. When you try to do the leaning back and forth, it's not particularly tight. For the hips, incredibly limited range of motion. You, as you're seeing here, it has what would look to be the appropriate type of joints in order to get it to work. However, there are no clearances on them, so you really can't get the legs to kick back and forth very much, and it is an ina inadequate set of splits. The knee joints are actually rather impressive, though, and actually would have done particularly well on this toy because while they have the right kind of uh, angles for the double-sided thing, they're also ratcheted joints, so they would have done a good job in actually holding the positions. Uh, that is, um, we actually had feet in order to get this figure to stand on. What I will note, though, is for the assorted joints for the hands and the head, as you kind of see here, they were incredibly tight in trying to swap things out, so I had to dip them into hot water to make any changes on this particular figure. And the reason why is because the openings on the various hands and heads themselves are much too small, or at least very tight. Now, for the Halo, which is once again based off the Resurrection F appearance, it sticks on top of this uh, more neutral smirk head just fine. It is a rather, well, I'm going to say that it's a translucent yellow, but it's still very bright on there. That being said, when I was trying to switch the neck joint, proof of concept, it took the whole joint with it. Now, once again, hot water was able to get it so I could retrieve the joint, but it does not want to really get out of its head without a lot of force, so that is something to make note of. And probably it's all these clearance issues that are why this particular figure, especially around the angles, sort of falls apart. I'd have to say generally the key issue this figure had is just the joints that they ended up using on a few different spots such as, in this case, specifically, the ankle joints on mine. They are the exact same size as the ones they use for the wrist joints, which work for the wrists because they are not supporting any weight. Whereas in this case, you needed to support all the weight, and apparently being glued in as these ones were, you just sheared them off. But also, in general, you also had a lot of general fitting issues, namely joints getting stuck in various parts, uh, needing to be heated up quite a bit in order to make it work, or you have incredibly loose things by comparison, like the torso here, which, as you can see, came off with very little effort and was quite frankly very wobbly on the original toy itself, even when it was on there right out of the case. Where you, and then you go get things like the shoulders here, which obviously you don't have the original audio, otherwise you would be hearing a lot of squeaking from how tight they were. Rather annoying, because then you have stuff like the hips, which lack of range, sure, but they work just fine, or things like the knees, which, like I mentioned earlier, are ratcheted, so they would have actually been able to hold poses very well. Then you see things like the accessories of the heads here, which, for the most part, except for maybe a small blemish here or two on the decals, are entirely serviceable and quite frankly look very good. The overall figure actually has very good paint and coloring on there, 
metallic purple is actually a really good fit for a freeze as a whole mostly clean on for most of the figure and the actual toy itself has a lot of shading kind of a little subtle shading throughout the same kind of light blue that you would have seen on the original release even Frieza himself is a slight off-white which is honestly fitting with how they actually had the plastic on the original figure as well as well as for newer releases now taking a look at the accessories there you can even see they have a little bit of paint on the fingernails so while it might not be a perfect touch on there it is scaled up and then down just to mention again it's still good enough that it's passable for something at this scale. What I will say though is it's not exactly a perfect decal placement on all the hands. I think I have one of these hands with an errant fingernail on the fists, which I don't cover on this particular bit of video now that I think about it. And overall it's not too bad. And of course you have the multiple feet, much like the original release. And of course the tail in the back, which as you might be able to guess from me not showing it in any shots up to this point, has some fitting issues and is actually super heavy for what it is. Now, as you can kind of see here, once again a demonstration of the general fitting issues on this toy. I, to remove the original fists, I did have to heat this figure up in order to actually get it to work there. And trying to get it back on any of the other hands in by force is not going to do because the openings on the hands are not wide enough. So, when we're encountered with that on this channel, you know what goes on. Namely, a little bit of drill bit work. In fact, this particular toy required a lot of different drilling bits or uh, general extra tools in order to get things to fit properly. So drill bits on all the different wrists and feet joined in order to get that to fit. Uh, for the heads, although I don't show it on camera, I actually had to uh, shave the openings slightly wider so they would stop getting stuck on the ball joint that is in there. That will get reinserted in the next bit of footage there. Which let's demonstrate what it looks like with one of the other face on there. Frankly, a very good look. And as you're wondering what's going on with the ankles now, uh, basically I found some of a old Kyoto uh, Revoltek joints and they are not a perfect fit by any means, but at least they were good enough for these shots. That being said, they barely hold the weight either. They're not meant to support this kind of weight as well, so yeah, it doesn't really work and I accidentally drilled through one of the feet in order to kind of get it in there. And even with all my attempts to kind of uh, trim and shave things to get in there, the tail still doesn't hold. It actually is, if anything, now a smidge too loose fit, or at least it can only fit in one way, and attempting to hold it will just take it, take everything with it for that matter. So, all in all, the figure itself for the upscale, it is a really good looking figure when you can get it up together, and is actually covering a lot of the little details that you would expect from the real thing. But, there are just so many faults with it that, no, I cannot seriously recommend getting this thing at all. While this might be an amusing novelty, it is not exactly something that is, uh, you need to rush out in order to get for your own collection. And on that note, thanks for watching, folks. I will be catching you all later.